ecstatic faces in the heart of a sleeping town where the streets hummed with silence rather than life after dark, there was a girl named Ada. Ada lived with a curiosity as deep as the night sky, and an old Polaroid camera was her vessel to explore the worlds within her reach. This camera was her treasure, a relic from an era long gone, found in the attic of her family's ancestral home. It was an innocuous beginning to what would become her nightmare. The first photograph was taken on a whim, a snapshot of her room where shadows played hide and seek with the setting sun. When the image developed, Ada's heart skipped a beat. Behind her smiling figure were two faceless silhouettes, blurred as if caught in motion. She chalked it up to a trick of the light, an error in the old technology. But with every click of the shutter, the figures grew clearer, their static faces devoid of eyes, noses, or mouths. They appeared in every photo, always in the background, always faceless, and always closer to Ada than before. Each new picture fed her rising panic. The figures seemed to be moving, inching towards her, photo by photo. Ada tried to tell her friends, but they laughed it off, blaming her active imagination. So, she turned to her grandmother, the only link to the camera's past. Her grandmother's eyes darkened as she listened, a stark contrast to the skepticism Ada expected. There are things in this world, child, that are beyond our understanding, trapped in the space between seconds. Your camera sees them. That night, Ada lay in bed, Polaroid in hand, debating with herself. The logical part of her brain screamed that this was insanity, but fear had woven itself into her thoughts. She decided on one last photo, one final glance into the impossible. The flash pierced the darkness, and the camera whirred to life spitting out the square piece of glossy film. As it developed, Ada watched, petrified. The figures were no longer in the background. They were behind her, as if they had just been there, breathing down her neck. She spun around to an empty room. The relief was short-lived. A low, static hum filled the air, the sound of a television tuned to a dead channel. Ada's breath caught in her throat as she slowly turned back to the camera. The static faces were gone from the photo, leaving behind just her room, her furniture, and the empty space where they should have been. Her phone rang, cutting through the silence. It was her best friend, Lily, her voice trembling. Ada, I... I took a selfie to send to you and there's someone behind me in the picture. But when I look, there's no one there. Ada's heart sank. She had not been the figure's endgame. She had been their doorway. And now, they were no longer confined to the photographs. They had stepped into her world. One snapshot at a time. Desperate to end the nightmare, Ada grabbed the camera and the photos. The faces staring back at her with their blank, static expressions. She remembered a story her grandmother had once told her, an old tale of spirits caught by cameras and how burning the images could send them back. She lit a match, watching the small flame flicker and dance. One by one, she set the photos on fire, the edges curling, blackening as the fire consumed the static faces. The hum grew louder, angrier, until it was a cacophony that filled the room, filled her heed, and then, silence. Ida looked around her room, at the charred remains of the photos. The feeling of being watched had vanished. She called Lily, relief washing over her, as her friend spoke of a normal evening. No mention of faceless figures or unsent selfies. The next day, Ada buried the camera, hoping to bury its curse with it. The world felt brighter. 
the shadows less menacing. But sometimes, when the night is still and the air is thick with the weight of the unseen, Ada wonders if she's truly alone, or if the static faces are simply waiting, watching, just beyond the frame of reality.